Welcome back to the Energy Conversion Lectures. In this lecture and the coming lecture, we will give more details about the armature windings of synchronous machines. As mentioned in a previous lecture, the armature windings of synchronous machines can be categorized into two types, concentrated windings and distributed windings. Let's start now with some details about the concentrated windings. This figure shows two poles three-phase synchronous machine with salient poles, rotor, and concentrated armature windings. As mentioned in a previous lecture, the concentrated armature windings can be defined as the windings where each side of any phase winding is concentrated or installed in only one slot. The general rule to prove this definition is as follows. First, divide the machine based on the number of poles into pole sides. Second step is to choose one of the pole sides and divide it based on the number of phases of the machine. Let's apply this general rule to this two poles three phase synchronous machine. Since this machine is two poles machine, then we can divide it into two sides, north side and south side. Then focus only on one pole side and divide it into three parts based on the machine number of phases. As we can see, the north pole side is facing the coils or windings sides of the three phases A, C dash and B dash. Each of these phase coil sides is installed in only one slot. That means side A of phase A is installed in one slot and side B dash of phase B is installed in one slot and side C dash of phase C is installed in one slot. Basically, that is why we say that in concentrated windings, each side of any phase winding is installed in only one slot. This figure shows four poles three phase synchronous machine with salient pole rotor with concentrated windings. Let's apply what we learned earlier to this four pole three phase machine. First, we need to divide this machine into four sides because this machine is four poles machine. Then focus only on one pole side and divide it into three parts because this machine is three phase machine. By doing that, we can find that each part of any phase winding is concentrated or installed in only one slot. That means side A1 of phase A is installed in only one slot and side B2 dash of phase B is installed in only one slot and side C2 dash of phase C is installed in only one slot. Now let's introduce some new terms about the armature windings. The first term is the slots per pole. Basically, the slots per pole can be calculated by dividing the total number of slots denoted by capital S over the number of poles denoted by capital P. Let's explain what does mean by slots per pole term. This figure shows two poles three phase synchronous machine with concentrated stator windings, which consist of six slots. So in this machine, the total number of slots is six and the number of poles is two. Therefore, the slots per pole is equal to three slots. 
we can also understand or visualize this term by dividing the machine depends on the number of poles. Since this machine has two poles, we can divide it into two sides, one facing the north pole called north pole side and the other side facing the south pole called south pole side. As we can see, the number of slots in each side of the poles are three slots. Three slots in the north pole side and three slots in the south pole side. So slots per pole represents the total number of slots of the stator located at one side of the rotor poles. Therefore, the slots per pole of this machine is equal to 3. The slots per pole can also be explained if we flattened this machine by cutting it from here. This figure shows the flattened representation of the machine. As we can see, the rotor north pole covers three slots or three coil sides, and the rotor south pole also covers the three slots or three coil sides. Let's take another example. This machine represents four poles three phase with salient pole rotor and concentrated windings. So if we follow the rule of identifying the slots per pole, then first divide the machine into four sides depending on the number of poles then count how many slots in each side of the poles. As we can see, the number of slots in each side are three slots. Therefore, the slots per pole of this machine is equal to three slots. In summary, the slots per pole can be defined as the number of slots that are facing one pole side. Mathematically, we can calculate the slots per pole by dividing the number of slots over the number of poles of the machine. That means this machine's slots per pole is equal to 3 slots. Before discussing another term about the armature windings, we would like to highlight here one important point. This figure shows two pole synchronous machine. This machine can also be called one pair poles machine. This machine shows four poles machine. This four poles machine can also be called two pairs poles machine. The important point we would like to mention here is that when the machine has more than one pair of poles, it is convenient to focus and concentrate on one pair of poles and understand that the magnetic and electric and mechanical conditions of that one pair of poles are repeated to other pair of poles of the machine. Based on this fact, if we have multipolar machine, then sometimes it is convenient to work and analyze and get result of one pair of poles and consider the other pairs of poles just as a factor applied to the result of the one pair poles analysis. This is true only if the number of poles of the machine are even number. Now let's go back and introduce another term about the armature windings which called slots per pole per phase and can be denoted by SPP or by small letter M. Since this machine represents two poles three phase machine and consists of six slots, the slots per pole per phase will be equal to one slot. Basically, if we focus on the upper side which facing the north pole, we can see that the upper side 
consist of three slots belong to the three phases slot A, slot C dash, and slots B dash. Now, if we divide this upper north side pair phase into three parts, we can notice that each of these three parts has only one slot belong to each phase which represents the term M. It is worth to mention here that the slots per pole per phase SPP of the concentrated windings is always equal to one slot. This figure shows four poles three phase synchronous machine with salient pole rotor and concentrated windings. Based on the rules we learned, slots per pole per phase of this machine is equal to one slot. In conclusion, the slots per pole per phase of the concentrated windings machine is always equal to one slot. Now let's learn another new term. The new term is called slot pitch angle or slot angle. The slot angle is defined as the mechanical angle between two adjacent slots and can be denoted by beta m and is equal to 360 divided by total number of slots of the stator. The slot angle can also be represented in electrical angle beta and can be calculated by multiplying beta m by the number of poles over 2 as shown. So the electrical angle beta will be equal to 180 over slots per pole. It should be noted here that the electrical angle is equal to the mechanical angle only in case of the two poles machine. Now assume we have this two poles three phase synchronous machine with salient pole rotor and concentrated windings. This machine can be represented by this flattened machine. The coil of phase A can be plotted as shown. The distance between the center of two adjacent poles is called pole pitch and can be measured by either the electrical angle between the center of two poles or by the number of slots between the center of two poles. Note that the angle between the center of the two adjacent poles is called the pole pitch angle. The pole pitch angle is always equal to 180 degree electrical. The number of slots between the center of two adjacent poles in this example is equal to three slots. Half slot from this side plus half slot from this side plus these two slots. Therefore, the total number of slots between the two adjacent poles in this example is equal to three slots. Now, since the slots per pole of this machine is also equal to three slots, then in general, we can say that the pole pitch is equal to slots per pole when it is represented by the number of slots. Now, pay attention to the coil sides of phase A armature winding. The distance between the two sides of any coil is called coil span and can be measured by electrical angle or the number of slots between the sides of the coil. So the angle between the two sides of the coil is called the coil span angle. If the coil span is equal to the pole pitch, then we call the coil full pitched coil. In other words, the full pitched coil is the coil where the angle between the two sides of the coil is equal to 180 degree electrical. Also, we can say that the full pitched coil is the coil where the number of slots between the two sides of the coil is equal to the slots per pole. Note that if the coil span 
is less than the pole pitch, we call the coil short pitched coil. Short pitched coil can be used with distributed windings and will be discussed in the upcoming lecture. We mentioned in a previous lecture that the armature windings and the rotor construction design of the synchronous machine impact the quality of the armature induced voltage. Basically, the armature windings and the rotor construction are designed properly to achieve sinusoidal magnetic field distribution and therefore achieve sinusoidal armature induced voltage. Since we are explaining the armature windings in this lecture, then we should also give some introduction about the armature windings induced voltage. We learned from previous lecture that the phase induced voltage of the armature winding denoted by VTA consists of two components. These two components are the armature reaction induced voltage denoted by Vs and the back EMF induced voltage denoted by Er. We would like to emphasize again that the stator rotating magnetic field Fs produces the armature reaction induced voltage Vs component, while the rotor rotating magnetic field Fr produces the back EMF induced voltage ER component. It is very important to know that the back EMF induced voltage component ER considered the main induced voltage component of the synchronous machine. Therefore, in this lecture, we will focus only on the back EMF induced voltage ER. So, from now on, Whenever we see capital letter E, we should know that this letter refers to the RMS value of the back EMF induced voltage that is produced by the rotor rotating magnetic field FR. Also, whenever we see a small letter E, we should know that this letter refers to the instantaneous value of the back EMF induced voltage. Now let's give some basics about the back EMF induced voltage ER which is induced in the armature windings terminals. This figure shows two poles single phase synchronous machine with salient pole rotor and concentrated stator winding represented by only single coil AA dash of phase A. We mentioned in a previous lecture that when the rotor winding is excited, the rotor magnetic field will be generated as shown. As we can see, the rotor magnetic field distribution can be trapezoidal waveform for this specific salient rotor design. Also, we mentioned that when the rotor or the rotor magnetic field moves or rotates, Across the stator winding, a rotor rotating magnetic field will be produced. Now pay attention to this point. When the rotor rotating magnetic field rotates and links the stator armature windings, the back EMF voltage ER will be induced in the terminal of the phase A coil as shown. As we can see, the shape of the phase A armature induced voltage will look like the shape of the rotor magnetic field distribution. That means the back EMF induced voltage is a trapezoidal waveform because the rotor magnetic field distribution is a trapezoidal waveform. It is very important to know that the rotor magnetic field distribution of the practical synchronous machine is close to sinusoidal magnetic field distribution and not trapezoidal waveform. At this point, we just need to know that the back EMF voltage waveform shape follow the shape of the rotor magnetic field distribution. 
Know that we will explain later how to improve the trapezoidal rotor magnetic field distribution and achieve close to sinusoidal rotor magnetic field distribution. Now let's provide some introduction to the approaches that used for identifying the armature winding back EMF induced voltage ER. In general, there are two approaches to explain how the armature winding back EMF voltage ER is induced. The first approach is by deriving or defining the magnetic field linkage Psi and then identify the back EMF induced voltage ER by calculating the rate of the magnetic field linkage Psi. In other words, we can achieve the back EMF induced voltage ER by applying Faraday's law ER equal D Psi over DT, where ER will represent the instantaneous back EMF induced voltage. Note that if we use this approach, we will find that when the magnetic field linkage Psi is maximum, then the induced voltage ER is minimum. Also, when the magnetic field linkage Psi is minimum, then the back EMF induced voltage ER is maximum. The second approach is by using the following voltage action formula ER equal LE times B cross product V to determine the back EMF induced voltage. Then identify the direction of the induced voltage ER by using Fleming's right hand rule. Basically, with this approach, the induced back EMF voltage is maximum when the magnetic field B and the coil relative velocity V are both 90 degrees apart in electrical angle. On the other hand, the induced back EMF voltage is minimum when the magnetic field B and the coil relative velocity V are aligned. In other words, the induced voltage is minimum if the magnetic field B and the coil relative velocity are both in the same direction or in the opposite direction. These two approaches will be discussed in detail in separate lecture. In the meantime, we will show how the back EMF voltage waveform ER is induced at different rotor position. However, before we start our discussion about the induced back EMF voltage, it is worth to mention here that the magnetic field distribution will be assumed as sinusoidal distribution. Therefore, the induced back EMF voltage will be sinusoidal waveform as well. This figure shows two poles single phase synchronous machine with salient pole rotor and concentrated stator winding represented by only single coil AA dash of phase A. This figure shows the same machine if we flatten the machine. As mentioned before, the coil AA dash has two sides, side A and side A dash. As we can see, the coil span angle between the coil sides is equal to the pole pitch angle and equal to 180 degree in electrical angle. In other words, the coil AA dash is full pitched coil. Now pay attention to this point. When the rotor rotates across the stator coil sides A and A dash, the rotor magnetic field will link the stator coil sides A and A dash and induces back EMF voltages in side A and side A dash. Now let's assume that the instantaneous back EMF induced voltage as side A is represented by EA. Also, the instantaneous back EMF voltage at side A dash 
is represented by E A dash. Therefore, the induced back EMF voltage of the coil A A dash can be represented by E R and will be equal to the potential difference of the coil sides back EMF voltages. That means the induced back EMF voltage of the coil ER will be equal to EA minus EA dash. Now let's assume that the rotor is already excited and the rotor is at this initial position shown. If we measure the induced voltage at side A and side A dash at this rotor position, we will find that the instantaneous voltages EA and EA dash have zero values when the rotor is at this initial position shown. Now if the rotor moves in this direction to this position, the voltage EA will increase and reach positive maximum value and the voltage EA dash will increase in this direction and reach negative maximum value as shown. Now if the rotor moves to this position, the induced voltages become zero. If the rotor moves to this position, the voltages are as shown. If the rotor moves again to this initial position, the voltages EA and EA dash become zero again and so on. Now if we take the difference between the coil sides induced back EMF voltages EA and EA dash, the instantaneous back EMF induced voltage ER can be drawn as shown. Again, the sides voltages EA and EA dash and the phase back EMF induced voltage ER are all sinusoidal waveforms because we assumed that the rotor magnetic field distribution is sinusoidal. It is very important to notice here that the peak value of the terminal phase voltage ER of the coil is equal to double the peak value of the coil sides voltages. This double magnitude value is achieved because the two side voltages are shifted 180 degree apart. The voltages EA and EA dash are shifted 180 degree because the coil side A dash and coil side A are shifted by 180 degree electrical. In other words, the side voltages EA and EA dash are shifted 180 degree electrical because the coil AA dash is full pitched coil. We highly recommend creating a small project using MATLAB Simulink to simulate two sinusoidal voltages with 180 degree apart and prove that the difference is equal to double the two shifted sinusoidal voltages. It should be noted here that in normal steady state operation of AC machine, we are usually interested in the RMS value of the voltages and currents rather than their instantaneous values. Therefore, let's prove that the coil EMF induced voltage of the coil is equal to double the coil sides by using the RMS values of the voltages. The RMS values of these instantaneous waveforms are as shown. The phasor or vector representation of the instantaneous voltages EA and EA dash can be represented as shown, where EA and EA dash are the RMS values of the instantaneous voltages EA and EA dash. Note that the RMS value EA is equal to the RMS value EA dash because the conductors of side A is equal to the conductors of side A dash. 
Now the phasor representation of phase A back M of induced voltage ER can be identified by calculating the potential difference of the two vectors EA and EA dash as shown. Now if we substitute the side voltages, the phase induced back EMF voltage of the coil can be identified as shown. It is very clear that the RMS magnitude of vector ER is equal to 2 EA. That means the RMS value of the phasor ER is equal to double the RMS value of the side voltages. As we can see, the magnitude of phasor ER is equal to double the magnitude of the two vectors. From this discussion, we can conclude that if the coil is full pitched concentrated coil, then the RMS value of the induced back EMF voltage ER of the coil is equal to the algebraic sum of the RMS values of the coil side voltages and equal to double the RMS value of the coil side voltages. Up to this point, we have learned how to calculate the phase back EMF induced voltage when the phase winding consists of only one concentrated full pitched coil. The question now, how to calculate the phase back EMF induced voltage of the phase winding if the phase winding consists of more than one concentrated full pitched coil? To answer this question, let's assume that the phase A winding consists of three concentrated full pitched coils as shown. It should be noted here that these three coils of phase A are always connected in series. It is very important to know that each of these coils will induce back EMF voltage when the rotor or rotor magnetic field sweeps or rotates across these three armature coils of phase A. The measured instantaneous back EMF induced terminal voltages of the three coils of phase A are as shown, where the voltage ER1 represents the instantaneous back EMF induced voltage of the first coil. The voltage ER2 represents the instantaneous back EMF induced voltage of the second coil. And the voltage ER3 represents the instantaneous back EMF induced voltage of the third coil of phase A. The RMS values of these instantaneous induced voltages are as shown. It should be noted here that the RMS values of these instantaneous induced voltages are equal because the number of turns of the three coils are equal. Now since the three coils of phase A are always connected in series, the instantaneous back EMF induced voltage ER of the phase A will be equal to the sum of the three instantaneous back EMF voltages ER1, ER2, and ER3. This figure shows the total instantaneous back EMF induced voltage ER, which represents the sum of the three coils induced voltages. It is very important to know that the instantaneous back EMF induced voltage ER1, ER2, and ER3 are aligned or in phase because the coil sides of the three coils of phase A are placed in one slot. In other words, there is no shift between the instantaneous back EMF induced voltages ER1, ER2, and ER3 because the three coils of phase A are concentrated coils.
Now pay attention to this important point. Since the voltages are aligned, then the RMS value ER will equal to the algebraic sum of the RMS values of the three coils. That means ER will equal to 3ER1, where ER1 equal ER2 equal ER3. The phasor diagram of the phasor voltages can be represented as shown. As we can see, all the vectors are aligned because the sinusoidal waveforms are aligned. Therefore, the vector sum will equal to the algebraic sum. In general, we can say that when the coils of phase A are concentrated coils, then the induced voltage of phase A, ER, will equal to the algebraic sum of the induced voltages of all coils of phase A. Note that the algebraic sum of the phase voltages represents the maximum possible voltage magnitude that can be achieved. In other words, there is no reduction factor on the phase induced voltage in case of the concentrated coils. Based on this fact or conclusion, we can introduce a new term called the effective number of turns of the phase coils. Let's give some idea about this term. Assume we have this two poles single phase machine with concentrated phase A winding consists of three coils connected in series. Now if we assume that each of the three coils of phase A has n turns, then the total number of turns of phase A denoted by n phase is equal to the sum of the coils turns and will be equal to 3n. Now pay attention to this point. Since the three coils are concentrated full pitched coils, then the effective number of turns denoted by n effective will be equal to the total number of turns of phase A n phase without any reduction factor. Basically, the effective number of turns of the phase coils is introduced because of the impact of the winding type on the induced back EMF voltage. So in case of concentrated windings, the N effective is equal to N phase because the induced voltage is equal to the algebraic sum of the coils induced voltage without any reduction in the voltage. We will see later during the discussion of the distributed windings that the N effective is equal to N phase times the reduction factor KW because the induced voltage contains the reduction factor KW. The concept of the effective number of turns will be discussed in detail in future lectures. Now let's summarize what we have covered up to now. At the beginning of this lecture, we covered some important terms about the armature windings. Then we provided some details about the back EMF induced voltage of any full pitched concentrated coil and we mentioned that the induced back EMF voltage of phase A ER is equal to the potential difference of the back EMF induced voltages of the coil sides EA and EA dash. Also, we mentioned that the result of the RMS value of the difference is equal to 2 EA in case of full pitched concentrated coil, where EA equal EA dash, and representing the RMS induced voltages of the coil size. The third point that we discussed is the phase induced back EMF voltage of multiple concentrated coils. In this point, 
we mentioned that the total back EMF induced voltage of the phase winding is equal to the algebraic sum of the induced back EMF voltages of all coils. Let's conclude this lecture at this point and we will continue in the next lecture. Let me know if you have any question. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you do not miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I am Ihsan Al Nabi and it was a pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.